Charlene, can you let me know? Yep, uh, everybody's good. Sure, so I'll sign up. Okay, so this is, you know, we've got this, this pandemic happening and what we're, what we've had lots of discussion around the district zone about, you know, what, what are we going to do about looking after our members and, and maintaining some, some membership uh, engagement. So the, the biggest thing, and I know we just want to go through what our priorities are on this and what we, what we really want to focus on. The first and number one priority on this entire program is our member health and well-being. We're going to talk about that in a minute. The second is kind of our club health. And thirdly, it's going to be our response to the community and how do we engage in the community, giving us some communication strategies to do this. So the way, where we're coming from, especially as we stream, and is that today is an incredibly important time that we define us. We define the relevance of Rotary and why we're important, not only to our members, but to the community and how we can have a major impact. If we do nothing in Turtle, we, we have a whole different issue. But to start with, again, I come back to our first priority, and that's that high uncertainty that we have right now in the world, amplified by this self and physical isolation of our members. And we need to be concerned about their physical and mental health. That needs to be all of our number one priority. Um, and the thing is, do we really know how our members are and how many clubs have taken the initiative to go out and just, just ask the members how they are? And I've, I told the previous group, uh, I made the commitment to our club uh, to phone every member of our club. We've eight, got 80 members. And I literally had members because I had called, I had reached out to them. And uh, I'm not saying that, you know, uh, I can't phone every member in the district. Christine can't phone every member in the district. And I'm not even suggesting that the president or leader of the club has to phone every member. But over time, we need a strategy and we need a strategy in your club to reach out to every single member. And every single member needs to be touched and not touch just once, but multiple times. So, you know, I went, you gotta go old school, pick up the phone and just talk to each other, right? We have tools like this that we're using right now. And, and that's, that's really important. Uh, and we can use them to focus on pods of people or have a meeting and that kind of stuff. And in my mind, emailing is a tool, but it doesn't replace talking. It doesn't replace that first. And I, the first question that has to come out of our mouths is really, what are our members' needs? We need to ask them if they have some nutrition sustainability. Do they need us to pick up and deliver groceries? We can leave them on the steps. We don't need to be going in and creating we've got, we've got, in my own club, I mean, we've got 80 some odd members. We have, you know, 20 people who are locked in and are incredibly vulnerable and can't can't get out of their house. One of them just finished uh, uh, two and a half months ago, had a lung plant in Edmonton, is, is this week being transferred to Calgary into his home. Perfect example of how, you know, what's it going to take to help him? Um, you know, some of these people, some of our members need help getting to a point, but we need this interaction. And again, I'm suggesting that it's not a one off call. Uh, you know, we can do digital, we can do phones, but the importance is creating some kind of vitality behind it. And at the end of the day, you know, once we understand how important it is for our own health, and our own physical health that we maintain contact, the next thing is we need a purpose every day to be alive and engaged. And I'm not sure how many of you feel right now, it's been a week that we've kind of been doing and I feel like it's Groundhog Day. You know, you get up to the same alarm, you get up to the same music, you have the same breakfast with the same coffee, and you go and do your emails, paper maybe, and then you do 
whatever the program is, and then you go to bed and you get up the next morning to the same music. We gotta, we gotta find a purpose. So right now, when I talk to our members, and I, as what I heard from our previous group as well, it's amazing how many of our members are saying, how do they contribute? How do they volunteer? So when we have that conversation with them, we need to do the W5. We need, who do they want to support? How, how can they even contribute? You're right. What's their time, their talent, their treasure? Are they willing to give more? Are they willing to give time when they can? But if they can support, if they want to give time, are they even able to, to support? Like our club, Cal we, we, Calvary West, we have uh, support the, the food bank every week with uh, a 10 to 12 people on a shift. Well, half our club now are not allowed to volunteer on those shifts because of the age categories and they, they're, they've been restricted there. So again, asking their members, what, what can they do? What are, what are their ideas? You know, why, why does our club exist? So, so how, how, do we, how do we take this? How do we create an action out of this? And how do we move this forward, right? So the first thing is, again, member health is always the first priority. I can't, I can't emphasize that enough. And again, the more I hear from members who have reached out, the more members I reach out to, it, it is incredibly important. We, we got to show why they even belong to a club, right? What, what's the relevance of us? The relevance is our family and our commitment to each other. And then our boards and our leadership in our clubs, we, we need to focus on how do we keep this member, member communication stuff happening, right? And you know what? I'm not all excited about making sure we have a weekly meeting or a bi-weekly meeting, but let's figure out ways that we can have committee meetings, either online or however other way we do it. Let's figure out, hey, how about other some online opportunities, like little chat rooms and things. And I've got some solutions maybe that we can discuss at the end here as well. How about online games? How many of the clubs have bridge clubs or they have whatever clubs? There's online tools that you can organize that for each other and do it. My granddaughter's, you know, got an, an online chess game that, that she's challenged me on to keep things going. Have an online party. Let's, you know, and how do we use our tools? We need, we need to be reaching out to our community who, where we have a focus, not waiting for them. We know there's a need. All of our, all of our clubs know there's a need out there. But now is not the time to start something new. I mean, we've got a lot of members that just say, I'm going to go do this. I'm going to go do that. And we need, we need to kind of harness the energy of all our club members and our district and figure out, hey, let's ask the agencies that we're close to, what are, they, what are their needs? And we know there's going to be definite financial needs because their money lines dried up. There's definitely going to be volunteer opportunities. But again, we need to make sure we understand What's the limitation of our memberships and how do we do that properly, right? Is there, are we have vulnerable sector, physical isolation requirements, whatever those issues are. But let's get to understand what they are. Let's understand what the volunteer opportunities are. Let's understand what the financial opportunities are. Let's set up meetings between, you know, our members, the boards, the agencies, the people. Let's create dialogue. Let's create dialogue and understanding. So this is the tough part, right? This is the tough part. Service above self, our motto, it's really a call to action. It's a call to action. And the clubs right now, uh, a lot of them that I've talked to and the questioning, they're really focused on protecting the wagon and circling the wagon and, and uh, they're, it's woe is me, we have different things, we gotta, oh, they're fighting more problems than they are answers. So as leadership, we need to find ways to help them say yes. We need to be able to build solutions with our club members and club teams through chats, meeting, online meetings, however we do it, to figure out different solutions. Maybe within our clubs, we've got a balance sheet that we've got reserves for operating. I know our club has one about a year and a half worth of operating in our operating budget, not our community service and others. We need, we need to maybe look at that and say, can these funds be used for this kind of thing? 
And let's change our fundraising focus. So we need to be more creative than ever we've ever been. Right? We got to engage and we got to engage the community in our fundraising effort. And I'm going to give you a couple of examples here. So fundraising, online fundraising things that were done. So um, I, I had organized a, uh, an Irish party. I know that's difficult to understand that I always wear green and named Daniel Doherty and we're having a, an Irish night on St. Patty's Day that we had to cancel. Well, guess what? Stampede didn't charge us for the room. The band didn't charge me for their time. The food was donated anyway. We had no cost really. We asked our donors and our, our uh, uh, people who had to bought tickets to the event to what, what, what would they like to do with the funds. And what ended up happening is they all left their money in and additionally we had more money come in. And we ended up raising $5,000 for the doorway and we were only budgeting to raise about 1500 bucks, $2,000. So shift, taking the negative, getting that lemon, squeezing the lemonade out of it and getting her going. Another one is, you know, can we have no dinner dinners? Can we have like an art auction? Uh, a couple of clubs are pulling an art auction together uh, and it was art, uh, art from the heart. And they were, they were looking at canceling the event. And this is the biggest fundraiser for the clubs that put this on. And at the end of the day, we said, stop, just a minute. What if we put this online? What if we had a no dinner dinner? We have the art auction online. We contacted the uh, uh, people doing the auction that we're going to be doing it live. And they're saying, hey, we've got an online portal to do that. And we'll support you by doing that. And we've also got Cisco, a member of our club is uh, uh, works in Cisco. They're going to put the equipment and the software together so that we can do that. We can now send this out, not just to our members, but wow, we can send that out to our local community to say, hey, this is, this is who we're supporting. This is what we're doing. And I'll bet you we'll raise more money than we would if we had the dinner. Thankfully to, to Mary this year, we, we had that Calgary Foundation portal set up as well, which allows us as individual clubs to, to create in, uh, fundraisers where, where people can, from the community or even our Rotary members, can donate to a cause, donate to something that we're raising money for, that we, we find, and they'll receive a tax receipt back. Uh, we, we then instruct the uh, Calgary Foundation where we want the money to go. Brilliant way to do it. Simple, simple, and again, we're helping the community help themselves. So this is kind of the end of the, of, of the presentation a bit. And I want to emphasize, I don't want anybody to lose contact. Don't never lose that personal contact. And again, with it, whatever you're doing in your club, and I know we all didn't volunteer to be doing this or to be secretaries and to be making phone calls, but my Lord, it makes a difference. And the other thing is, Remember that every member, we're going to have to communicate with them differently. As Marlene told me, uh, you know, she's not as excited about seeing people as often as I am and doesn't need all that as much as I do, but we need to respect that. And the other thing is, whatever technology we choose, it may not hit every one of our members. You know, we still got members with flip phones, never mind having computers that have uh, cameras and, and speakers in. So how are we do how do we do this? We can have a Zoom meeting. You know, you can get a license. We've got we've got a license that you can get access to and get your own license for your club at a discounted rate through the district. All you need to do is contact Charlene and uh, we you know, we're going to have a copy to be downloaded of what what's going to be included in that, but you can right away start on on creating kind of Zoom meetings. It doesn't always do some of the chat stuff that we need to do, but uh, one way to do that is if everybody could, everybody in your club or whoever you want, who wants to, could download a free version of Zoom and they can do their own little Zoom meetings with their members, their friends and whatever. Now you got a time limit of 40 minutes on the call and whatever. And uh, 
that's awesome, right? To be able to do that. Again, you get this contact happen. There's go-to meetings is another software solution that, that uh, uh, we're moving away from at work or business, but it's still older. Facebook Live, a lot of our clubs have Facebook pages. A Facebook Live meeting or presentation is an awesome way to go. There's Google Hangout. And the one that I'm using at, at work right now is uh, Microsoft Teams. Now, uh, that, that is uh, each, what would require there is that each club kind of set up their own domain, uh, but everybody can download the Microsoft Teams software free if you're a, a Rotary group, and you can immediately start some dialogue going around your club. You have these mini chats and whatever. And what I've got is that's what I'm using at work. Uh, what you can see here is I've got a thing going here. I've got a, so somebody's looking to chat with me right now, right? Just heard, oh, this is good. There's not much they can do for her. She needs to wait to test results. So here we've got somebody that has the virus or is being tested for the virus. And what does that mean? So we're able to keep in touch with all my staff. We have, we have, uh, the, the, okay, we can even send jokes to each other, but we've got, we've got the ability to have chats. We have team chats. Uh, I've got my sales. Here's how we're tracking stuff for the coronavirus within our, within our platform. And again, uh, it, it can be all managed. Everybody in the club can have access to this and they can go chat whenever they want. They can send a, a chat request to their buddies and, or, and have, a, have a little meeting. So again, it's another, it's another way to, to do, the, do the process. So here we are. The difference between what we do and what we are capable of could solve most of the problems in the world. Let's change that a little bit. The difference between what we as district leaders and club leaders and just simply members do and what we're capable of doing, that could solve a lot of what's happening, the issues that are happening in Alberta right now with this virus. So with that, I'd just like to I'll stop my sharing. I'll I'm video myself and I'd like to create uh, some, some dialogue. And if, if people could kind of show, show me their, their uh, or, or put their hand up and we'll, we'll get some dialogue happening. Christine, would you like to add anything? Yeah, I would like to add that, that um, Dan has, an, has a new role in our, as the zone leader now, and he's part of the membership uh, zone committee with Bill Robson. And uh, this, is, this is a program that we're hoping to see go, go across our zone to all the districts and even further. So your participation is really important. So if you have any questions at all or comments or suggestions, please share. Thanks. Hello, it's me, Mano. Hi, Mano. How's it going, everybody? Good, good to, to see you. See, yeah, good to see all of you out there. I just wanted to share a few success stories over the last week. Um, that, uh, anyway, a few success stories. So success story number one, the Rotary Club of Calgary downtown uh, has uh, started their weekly meetings on Zoom. Uh, we made a board decision to purchase the, the full-blown version of Zoom, and I know Craig can let us know what that version is called, but it allows us to have many people online. Uh, e I even played O Canada. Yeah. <laughs> I <laughs> it was kind we of just funny. can't get rid of some of those traditions, can we? I know. It's really funny. So that worked out really well. Uh, success summary number two, we had our first board meeting using Zoom. It was extremely lengthy. We learned how to uh, implement some, or, or, or the lessons learned from that is uh, having some ground rules. Like if you want to speak, you know, raise your hand and the chair will, will recognize you because it's easy with Zoom meetings for everybody to speak at the same time. And that could be quite frustrating for, for people. 
So, uh, but anyway, the meeting was two hours and what was it, Craig? Two hours and 45 minutes long. Um, and it was wonderful. None of us had to drive anywhere. I, I don't know. Some of this, some of the things that we're putting in, in play now are things that I can see us doing moving forward once all of this is over, if it is ever over. Uh -huh. um, so that was success story number two. Success story number three is uh, we had a, a wine tasting with some folks from the Rotary Club of Okotoks yesterday. So if you uh, want to be included with in that, you can certainly you know kick back 4.30 Sunday afternoons. It's a repeating meeting on Zoom. Uh, they just wanted to do it virtually. And uh, one of their members said, why don't we do this as a Zoom meeting? And I said, I'll set it up. And next thing we knew, we were, a bunch of us were all online with our glasses of whatever, uh, enjoying each other's company. So it, awesome. it, all it takes is just do it. Just do it. Uh, and thanks, Christine, for suggesting that we reach out to our clubs as AGs, uh, because I picked up the phone. And finally, I'm getting through to <laughs> my, uh, my presidents, which is wonderful. And uh, they're, all, they're all busy um, doing stuff, trying to figure this out. So, so that's great news. Uh, number one is the, the clubs are indeed trying to figure it out. Some of them like Calgary Connect is trying to figure out how they can do more volunteering and they have some answers. So anyway, I have a Zoom meeting with all of them uh, in two days and uh, we'll see what best practices there are because of course, in the back of my mind is we have the community hubs here in Calgary. Uh, there's perhaps not much activity happening at the hubs, but the, you know, where are people connecting to find out where they can get help? Uh, because I think, uh, as I'm sure everybody has read, there's three crises happening, the mental, the, sorry, the physical crisis, the economic crisis, and then the mental health crisis. So, um, uh, it, it won't be long where that's on every one of our doorsteps. So, uh, you know, how can we get engaged without compromising our own health? And I, I agree, Dan, maybe, maybe what we do is we, I, I don't know who can give us lists of names of people that need money to go grocery shopping. Let's drop off um, uh, cards at their doorstep, right? Cards to let's let's start with whatever I don't know. It's, it's, let's start with our own clubs, and you know that's where. Yeah. It's, and we're we're trying to your your comments are just amazing, and that's exactly why we're having these these calls. And what I'd like to be able to do is, you know, we're gonna we're trying to create a blog, and and make it uh, all these sto good st stories available to everybody. So mm -hmm. we're recording this, and we're gonna be able to use this but we're also gonna be able to track that and get that going. As oh, I see uh, Christine in, just posted about how we having a meeting with the hubs. Okay, good. Yeah. So we'll wait and see and find out. Um, yeah. Okay, good. anyway, there's my two cents. I'm gonna to have to leave early. I'm a, I'm a teacher today. I'm a teacher every day and I have my grandkids. So um, I- That's I have pretty to special. That. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm living the grandmother dream. I have them every <laughs> single day of the week. It's like, <laughs> Okay. Hey. Okay. Why don't I just go along the screen talk? David Thompson, of Calgary North. I got to mute. There we go. You still there, David? Go ahead, David. You're unmuted. Oh. Okay. We're not getting anything there. Maybe we'll come back uh, there. How about Andrew? There we go. Oh. Andrew, you there? Oh, there's David Thomas. There's David now. Got I move on you, David? I'm, I was using a Bluetooth headset, but uh, it's coming in and out on me. So, okay, you've got you've got the you've got the stage right now. So, yeah, we're we're figuring it out. We're doing our first board meeting. Uh, we'll use Skype tomorrow night to do it. I've 
worked and working through the group, getting everybody set up. Um, so we'll, are you, are you getting what I'm saying? Yep. Good. Yep. So that's the first step. Um, we've canceled our meetings through to April 6th and uh, subject to what the board feels, we may try and, and uh, uh, run some online meetings to uh, keep things moving along. Uh, I agree with you. I think uh, my biggest concern is that, that we don't want to be perceived as being irrelevant in the present situation and, and, uh, and lose contact with the people. I think both those things are critical. So very important. Don't have a lot more to say at the moment. Uh, lots of opportunities though, I think, to, to see what we can do and share ideas. Super. Thank you, David. Let's go back to Andrew. Can, Andrew, can we get you going again? Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah. All right, yeah. Um, so our, our, of course, member meetings are, are canceled until further notice i uh, haven't had a, a board meeting for three weeks or so so we'll have to plan something up like that and i know one of our our inbound counselor he had suggested a couple months ago that we all get onto that microsoft teams thing so that's certainly something we'll have to look into and that's uh, being free is probably ideal for us unfortunately our one of our major fundraisers uh, our friendship dinner is was scheduled to be held at the end of April. Now that's a, a dinner where we host 250 people. Um, we typically bring in about $10,000 from it, which is about a third, a quarter of what we, we would fundraise in the year. So that one's on on hold and definitely maybe we'll do that in the fall. Uh, I've you do the no a, dinner dinner, Andrew. Yeah, that's... This, this year was going to be a, an interesting one for us to begin with because our archaic club, uh, it was traditionally an all-male event. And I think we're in our 56th year of the event. And uh, we decided as a club to open it up to the fairer sex. And we weren't sure how that was going to go over in the first place. It, it looks good uh, on paper and everything, but you know, we're, we're, we need the enthusiasm to sell the tickets and, and keep it going. So we weren't really changing a whole lot this year. Uh, I don't know what it going to a no dinner dinner events, you know, our, our small town, um, every year, wh whether it's like even last year and the year before for the golf tournament, for the friendship dinner, the fundraising is getting harder and harder and harder. Uh, we, we don't have big corporations to, to lean on for, for funding and for money like maybe some of the city clubs might. So it's sort of scary for us, certainly for our fundraising efforts. Um, we, we are unfortunately canvassing the same small businesses every year. And uh, over the last four years, it's been getting skinnier and skinnier. So Andrew, could we maybe uh, have an offline chat, uh, maybe, um, we'll get together and just have a chat through some of those and I've got some ideas maybe that we can we can help you out with that so sounds great yeah, yeah and, and your AG Craig also can help with that too Dan yeah, yeah. exactly you, you Chris. Chris. Yeah. yeah that's that's certainly welcome yeah I've reached out to a few uh senior members of the club those that are you know weaker and frail uh spouse of one who her her husband, well, John Newsham's in the hospital, so Muffy's all alone. I've mm -hmm. reached out to her, and there's certainly a few other ones I need to do. So, so mm -hmm. calling up each and every one of them individually—that's mm -hmm. certainly something that uh, I will I will plan to do. That's a good mm -hmm. idea, and it's it's hard for me to it, it's important, right? The, the club we need, we need a purpose, and and I just need to trudge through that and uh, maintain that and keep involved and keep everybody else involved and that's my responsibility so I need to put my big boy pants on and do that mm -hmm. and be the leader well you know what but you're not alone Andrew so that that's the key mm -hmm. you know Craig's there I'm there Christine's there Mary's there Martin's there lots of people are there to support you and, and help you so so don't, don't try to do this by yourself okay let's let's work together on, on making this thing work yeah okay 
Beauty. There's good feedback, and that's mm -hmm. exactly why we're having this conversation. Mm -hmm. Craig, I see you want to talk. Start the video here. Uh, no, I, I was just going to weigh in and uh, you know continue to offer uh, my support to Andrew. Uh, but now that I've got the mic, uh, <laughs> uh, I think Menon covered off what we're doing in our club fairly well. So I'm just going to switch it up a little bit and talk about my workplace for, for a second. So I'm part of an IT team that has been very stable and very close knit for uh, coming up on 11 years now. And uh, over these 11 years, we have started every workday uh, with a group coffee at 8.30. Um, so I thought almost immediately we needed to continue this. So I got my own team up on Zoom. We had our first e-coffee uh, last Wednesday morning, and I was absolutely stunned uh, by how eager everybody was to connect and, and talk. Uh, so kind of my tip for, for getting through this is if you do have a routine, uh, really try and stick as close to it as possible. Uh, so I allow myself to sleep in by the amount of time I would have spent driving to work. That is it. <laughs> Otherwise I'm up, I'm dressed. I have my, uh, uh, eight 30 coffee as if, uh, we're ready to go for a regular work day. And I would have to say my team is pretty jazzed. Uh, these days and we're actually getting an amazing amount done. <laughs> so I just wanted to share that almost as a sort of an uplifting message that we're really quite uh, uh, effective in continuing to work together uh, in a work perspective. I think that's so good. I mean, one of the things I talk, I, I've read a lot I've been trying to practice is I get up and I, I get my shower, I do, look, I even got a rotary shirt on today. Yeah. I yeah. mean, you, you dress like you're going to work. Yeah, just, exactly. Yeah. Like in your, and I notice those aren't your pajamas, so that's really good. So yeah, this is a work work shirt actually. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay, Alan, you seem to be putting your hand up. Yes, sir. I just want to give you an update. We had our board meeting last week. It was a Zoom board meeting. Uh, we got the shit done. We need to get done, so that was good. Today we had a Facebook Live at uh, nine o'clock. We had a little glitch, it went for a couple minutes and then failed and then uh, President Sherry gave her a go again and it started again. So that's excellent. So that part is good. Um, personally, I got to say, I love the idea about, you know, keeping your routine and that kind of thing. Except that I haven't worn pants for a week and I probably won't wear pants for another couple of weeks. That's pretty awesome. That's not a good visual. I can't get that <laughs> out of my mind now. Hey, I didn't ask you to visualize it. I'm just telling you. <laughs> Comfort-wise, this is pretty damn nice. <laughs> That's all I had. Good. <laughs> Who, who's Luggy B? It's, it's Larry from Okotoks. Larry, Larry from Okotoks. Larry, you going to come on? Unmute yourself. Am I unmuted? Now you're unmuted. There you go. There you go. I'm yibbering again. Well, somebody else turned coat on me because they already put me into the wine drinking session, which I know none of you would know I was involved in. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, it was a good deal. We had Jimmy Shaner and we had some other uh, Rotarians on that. So it was good. I got to go back, Dan, with something like Andrew was saying, like we're sort of, and you've been out here at Oak Toast quite a bit, you and Christine's been out here. We're sort of the same way and we've uh, chose not to uh, put on some of our fundraising and part of it was I went out to the membership and I went out to the board and uh, we've got hammered pretty bad out here with our uh, local business people and that and we just didn't figure as Rotary corporate citizens it was a good idea to, to start uh, tasking them again for trying to fundraise. So. Uh, We've done okay. We did our casino and we'll see what we'll get out of that. And we did our car fundraising, as you know. So yeah. from that standpoint, we're not really hard pressed for a whole bunch of cash to get back into something that we got to support. So we've sort of taken a little bit of a, you know, like a little bit of an escape from that, that side of it for the next little bit until we see when we get through this and how the business people uh, that always support us fantastically here in, uh, in Okotoks, you know, we sort of want to give them a little bit of a rest. Uh, other than that, we're, uh, you know, I, you know, I'm reaching out to the members. I got a small club anyways, and I'm reaching out through, uh, you know, the, some Jeff and John and some of the rest have been fantastic. 
uh, all my membership teams uh, that have been running out have been uh, looking after that. We uh, worked through our youth programs uh, even before we had some of the youth uh, meetings the other night. I was zoomed in on uh, myself and Kevin. We already had our Brazil student going back because we talked to his parents and himself. And we got Claire coming in today. So, so I'm feeling pretty good that we got our kids where they should be back with their families. And uh, so, yeah, we're working through that. And uh, so far, it's just, you know, we're looking at going at and uh, like you found out, we Zoomed with the wine. We can definitely use the Zoom going back through our club and that. So we're, uh, we're working that out and working through with the board right now to uh, see how we want to arrange for the next meeting. The, the, thanks, Larry. That's a great update. One of the things that I think I, I want to share that have been part of these discussions at the zone level and, and the international level is that we're looking at actually using High River as an example, um, creating the opportunity very shortly for global grants to be used to rebuild our small communities and our small business communities. And uh, if you remember the floods down in High River and how um, the global grant by the High River Rotary Club was used to help the small businesses get themselves back on track, um, that's the kind of program that we're, we're trying to design that would be easy to implement and we could get access to some of the funding to do that kind of thing. So I think that we need, what, what's really important now, Larry, I think you, you, you've said you've really been hit hard and Andrew, you kind of have the same message. So let's see if we can find that project in the community or something in the community that is just a dire need of funding. And then, and then maybe your club doesn't have the capability to do it by itself, but as a group, we can come together and do that connectivity that we need to do more and, and, and see if we can find some ways to fundraise. So, you know, thanks Larry for, for what you're doing there. Okay. So let's go to Leah. Hi. Um, Hi. Okay, so I think right now, um, for our club at least, which is a Rotaract online club, so we're not even technically a Rotary club. Um, we are continuing our online meetings, um, kind of checking in with our members every week, um, and just kind of, like you guys said, um, keeping up with routine and trying to keep everybody together. Um, we are also, we're trying to see if we can reach out to some of the exchange students that did have to come back early because that can, we definitely understand that that can be very stressful for some people. So I think we'll definitely in the next couple of weeks try and um, reach out to them if that's possible. And yeah, but other than that, we're pretty much business as usual. Hey, I got an idea. I know that's unusual, Leah. <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> Go for it. Hey, what, what if you reached out to the, uh, the Ryla group, the uh, uh, Khaled Kajaji in the group, because of Ryla being, will be, or I don't know if you've officially canceled it yet, Christine, or not, but uh, it, it, they will be canceling it. It won't, won't be able to. What if, what if you interacted with all the, you got together with them, and he had an online meeting with all the students that could have come to Ryla. Mm -hmm. could yeah. Have come to Ryla and, and give them some ideas on, hey, this is how you guys want to get involved in the community. Because a lot of, you know, my, my grandson's in high school, he really wants to do something, right? Mm -hmm. and, let, and help them figure out how they can get, get uh, engaged. Yeah, definitely. That's actually such a great idea. Thank you. Okay, so 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 you've been charged now with getting hold of Khaled. Okay, sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> okay, awesome. awesome. Thanks, Leah. Thanks for all Thank your time you. to keep that going. Michelle, got to unmute yourself, Michelle. There, there we go. go. Hello. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes. Can hear you. Awesome. I'm actually making lasagna right now, so bear with me. I'm listening, though. <laughs> um, yeah, this has been definitely a challenge. And uh, like Andrew says, we are going to reach out to all of our, our members. And we have a few that uh, we do need to take uh, 
consideration of where they're at. We have such a small club and we are going to be struggling. I think we were going to be struggling anyways before this. And so now this is going to really, really cause a bit of all our fundraisers and everything we had planned this year kind of gets pushed to the wayside. And But uh, maybe it'll bring us together and stronger, hopefully, when we're, we're through all this. I, I think I think that that's what it's going to be. Is we have to we have to change that Pygmalion effect. You know that when you, we make happen what we think is going to happen, and so we got as a team we got to support each other and have that belief that we're going to come out of this stronger. Actually, when we're going into it, we're, we're going to have some speed bumps along the way. We're going to have some, some big coffee, but you know I think that. If we respond properly, we identify stuff happening in the community, and we look after, first of all, our members, I think this is this is where Rotary can shine, so. Yes, I think this year is gonna be kind of put on pause and our focus is just gonna be on Rotary members and uh, on our community, what we can do in the immediate, what we can do to help. Awesome, that's, that's it, that's perfect. Good job, thank you, Michelle. Yeah. <laughs> Jade. Hi. Well, I'm actually part of Leah's club. Also, we're in the same club. So what you suggested for the Ryla thing is really, really awesome because um, we were planning to send a couple members anyway. So that actually is really helpful to us to, for us to get into contact with them. And yeah, we didn't think of that. So thank you for that idea. You're welcome. Okay. So how about Martin and Mary? I kind of muted both of you. So Martin. Yeah, so again, this, this is the second meeting um, I've been on and just some phenomenal, um, uh, you know, comments from the uh, different members, you know, but a couple of things. This is the first real opportunity of us coming together and just, you know, being as a group and chatting, um, I feel that we're now more part of something. I, we were a bit dispersed initially. I know at our club uh, in Cochrane, um, we really hadn't figured out a plan. We're going to have a Zoom board meeting tonight with that group. So I think this is the right path. And one thing I just wrote down was two things, fellowship and community. And I think, you know, it's been, it's been shown when we've done a, a district survey that those, those are the two things people want anyway. And now it's even more important. So, I mean, if we come in with fellowship and community and all that that means, that's going to take us a long way. And I just think, um, yeah, I'm just, I'm just excited about where we're going at the moment. I feel like We've taken a little bit of control now, not, not a huge amount, but we're starting to do things for our members, you know, with our members, that there's a bit of a light at the end of the tunnel. And I just think we've got to work hard and do that. Yeah, and it's not a train coming at you. It's, it, it is. <laughs> <laughs> Mary. There we go. Thanks, Dan. Um, it's just so great to get everybody together and to share what's happening in your respective clubs and in the communities. And, and Andrew, I know that uh, you guys have always had a golf tournament. We've always had a golf tournament in Olds. So we've never been able to sell out either tournament. And maybe this is the opportunity to, to do something together and to work a little closer together. So, you know, uh, I, I think that this is certainly going to be an opportunity to work more collectively together throughout our district with our neighbor clubs. And so um, maybe that's something that we could have a conversation about later on. And, and Craig, maybe you can help facilitate uh, a conversation with us together and with Sylvan as well, perhaps. I did want to talk to you all about something that I've got going on uh, with Alberta Health Services. Um, as you know, my husband's involved in Alberta Health at the senior levels, and he uh, has been working with some senior leaders in Alberta Health Services to talk about how to engage civic volunteer service clubs, guess who that might be, 
um, with helping with transition for people who are recovering from or are isolated with uh, the COVID-19 virus. I'm going to be sitting in on a meeting tomorrow with my counterpart from 5370 and we will be having a conversation about what that could look like. Um, specific specifically looking at um, individuals coming home from hospital to our communities who need help either with groceries being dropped off at their doorstep or um, grass cut when the snow melts or uh, anything like that errands run to pick up uh, pharmaceuticals at the pharmacy I'm not sure what it might look like. Um, they are talking about opening up a 211 phone number whereby people that need anything, whether it's financial support, social supports, uh, counseling supports, or you know, groceries dropped off, could dial this number and it would be connected through to some kind of repository that would uh, connect to um, potential volunteers through Rotary. Um, I know they were very excited with the fact that Rotary is so diligent with police record checks and with our vulnerable checks. Uh, those are the kinds of volunteers that Alberta Health Services wants to talk to. So I'll find out more tomorrow. I, I'm going to have a conversation and just see how Rotary could potentially help in this next coming uh, wave of the virus as we start to see people recovering from the virus and coming home to community. So just wanted to, to let you know about that. And uh, I'll certainly keep everybody informed as I learn more myself. So thank you for all you're doing for Rotary. And I really think that this is our opportunity to shine. Others will see the work that we do. And, you know, I'm really confident that it could be an amazing membership boost to see Rotary doing what we're doing in the community. So um, I think we need to keep the conversation going amongst each other. We need to support each other. Uh, it's, it's unprecedented uh, circumstances and we need to really know that we're there for each other and please don't hesitate to call. Thanks, Dan. Perfect. So if, does anybody else have anything else to add or Christine, would you like to maybe? I do, I have an exciting announcement actually. Um, Haider Hassan, our community partnerships chair, has just been appointed by uh, Premier Kinney to head up the Vulnerable Persons uh, uh, Program of, of Assistance. I don't, I don't know what the exact name of it is, but it is being announced as we speak, uh, if it isn't already. And uh, Christina let me know yesterday that this was coming and, uh, and exactly how that looks, I don't know, but Hyder will be representing the province. And through the Rotary, uh, the connection that he has, that word will get out through Rotary as well, that we have somebody that's a Rotarian that's going to be out there helping our vulnerable people. So stay tuned. There's lots of details coming on that, but this is an exciting announcement to help. That's, that's incredibly exciting. It couldn't be a better person for sure. Yeah, that's right. Okay, well, if that's uh, everybody's uh, we need. Charlene, did you want to uh, say anything or are you okay? Good here, thank you. Okay, so Thank you, everybody, for, for starting this dialogue. Thanks for your input. Uh, we're going to try to maintain, and oh, Andrew raised his hand. Andrew. Yeah, I got a question. Maybe Mary could help me being in the medical field. <laughs> if if okay. we're going to be running around, and I, I think it's a great idea to be delivering groceries and all that stuff, but one of the things that fears that I, I'm scared shitless about is that we could be shedding it without even knowing. And if we're delivering groceries door to door to vulnerable people, and I'm not worried about myself, like I could get, I could contract the disease, I could have mild symptoms, but if I'm delivering groceries to a 70 year old or an 80 year old, what are the best practices I can take to ensure that I'm not sp spreading sputum or whatever it might mm -hmm. be or virus mm -hmm. particles all over these grocery bags or these, these food items that I'm collecting? And Is there any resources out there to tell us how to properly do that? So thanks for the, the question, Andrew. I think that's going to be part of my conversation that I have tomorrow with Alberta Health Services, just to 
safeguard um, any kind of interaction that we would have with people and just see what kind of protocol they would want us to take on. So really good question. And I have a number of questions that I would like to ask these folks and, and it's just the beginning of the conversation, but yeah, you're right on. Um, there's lots of things that we need to think about. And honestly, there's lots of Rotarians that are vulnerable themselves that would not be eligible to take on these kinds of things. So. Um, it's still early in the, like I haven't even had the conversation, so I'll certainly ask the questions and get back to you with as many answers as I can find. Thank you. Great, thank you. That good, Andrew? Is it, do you wanna yep. follow up on that or you're good? Yeah, it just, it just make it available or send out an email to uh, all the clubs and best practices for, for partaking in these types of activities because it's something we all wanna do, but we don't wanna just do it willy nilly without mm -hmm. uh, protecting those people we're trying to help. 100%, 100%, yeah. Yeah, and what, what, what we want to do from this is create a blog opportunity for us to be able to get this information out as soon as we hear and, and keep, keep clubs connected. So that's one of our next steps to do. So thanks everybody, thanks for what you're doing. Thanks for looking after the members. Thanks for looking after the community. And uh, just know that uh, we're all here to support you and help you in what you do, so. Great, thanks, thanks Dan. Thanks Dan. Thanks, Dan.